Hello, and welcome back to another Halo 3 modding tools tutorial. In this video, we'll be discussing basic scripting as well as useful resources to help you learn scripting. Uh, before we begin, I want to go ahead and tell you what resources I use and will be consulting throughout this video. Uh, my first recommendation, as it has been the most helpful to me, is consulting the existing mission scripts that Bungie has included with their missions. Uh, spending some time reading and playtesting said missions really helps you understand a bit more about how those levels are made, and you could reverse engineer ideas from them. A useful glossary for Halo script is c20.reclaimers.net. I also encourage you to join the Halo modding Discord, and I highly recommend using Notepad++ for scripting, because if you're using regular Notepad to script, I am reporting you to the police. Links for all of these resources will be in the description below. And something else... In the console within Sapien, if you type in script underscore doc, it'll generate a text file of valid commands that you're able to use in your scenario. Now, with all that being said, I want to go ahead and cover the different script types that you can use here. Continuous scripts are one of my personal favorites as someone with OCD because these scripts literally never shut the hell up. I like to use this one for ensuring a baseline of enemy units on the field. For instance, I want to always keep a certain number of flood infection forms alive. Write a continuous script with living count conditions. Uh, dormant scripts are some very sleepy boys. Uh, this script will sit quietly until it's its turn to play, uh, which you'll call with the wake command. Uh, for instance, if I were to script a phantom dropship as a dormant script and call it script dormant phantom underscore reinf for, you know, reinforcement, uh, I would then later call back to it with wake phantom underscore reinf. Uh, this script will run once and then go back to sleep forever. Startup, pretty self-explanatory. Runs once at startup. Great for setting up your mission intros, cutscenes, initial squad placements, things like that. Static scripts. I'm going to be honest here. I don't know a ton about these, so I don't want to misinform anyone. Uh, from my understanding, though, these are similar to dormant scripts in that you write them out and then call them later. Where dormant scripts run once, however, you can call back on static scripts multiple times. Global scripts are uh, absolutely wonderful scripts that Bungie was kind enough to leave in the uh, h3ek slash data slash globals folder. Uh, global underscore extras dot hsc has a phantom reinforcement global where you just plug and play the units you're spawning in, and global underscore scripts dot hsc has several scripts that you'll see called throughout the campaign missions. Command scripts are scripts specifically for AI to run, which are then called to with cs underscore run underscore command underscore script and orders the specified AI to run the tasks in said script. For example, moving to a location, looking at a point, uh, shooting at an object or character. Uh, the way I got a better grasp on this kind of script specifically is the warehouse section of the storm uh, in your folders um, that is uh, 040 underscore void in the solo levels folder. Uh, and this is the part where the hunters shoot the fusion coils when the workers come in. Uh, there's a volume check that once you've crossed it, it triggers. It causes the hunters to shoot the fusion coils. Great script to dissect for information. For a hands-on demonstration, here's a simple move to script that I wrote. Lines 19 and 20 will cause the squad to cancel the command script if it goes into alert status or gets hurt. And you'll see in my command script that I have CS init success print to console, confirming that the script has succeeded to that point. The next few lines are where script data point sets in Sapien will be used. The console will print again once a squad reaches P0 as seen here. Once arrived, they'll wait for 90 frames before printing first point success, and then move on, printing again once the script is finished. Pathfinding on high ground is rough, and I've yet to explore how to modify it, so a few infectors may get stuck for a moment, um, but they'll get there. A uh, quick addendum. Make sure that you have a don't strip pathfinding set for your scenario to make sure that the pathfinding data stays in. I hope this video was able to help you get started on your scripting journey. Uh, if you enjoyed, feel free to drop a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.